Welcome to the artwork of CP, everyone. Today, we, pre we pre-warned you guys last week that today is going to be a little bit of a emotional, different episode because Danielle, my trusted BFF, has now decided to come out with her story of emotional and physical abuse. And I don't even know this story, you guys. And considering she's been my BFF for 25 years. So it is really, really hard for a emotional and physical abuse victims to talk about it because it's just is. And to give you the facts, um, people with disabilities, disabilities in general, are more likely to have emotional and physical abuse because um, they are put in these predicaments um, that they can't run away from, really. <laughs> they can't run away from. So it's really, really, really hard for anyone to speak about emotional and physical abuse, especially those who are disabled. So that's why I highly suggest, and that's why you're going to hear a voice that you don't hear very often coming off Danielle's iPad, because, yeah, me, me, I had a hard time talking about it, but I highly suggested that Danielle bring an iPad, and so that's the voice we're going to hear first, and so if you guys hear a computerized voice, that's still Danielle, that's still fire clacking Danielle, but because of the subject matter pushing buttons is a little bit easier. And so without further ado, I'm ready, Danielle's ready, let's do this. On July 4th, 2006, I was happy to be a part of the 4th of July parade with Challenge Espen showing off our play from that summer, Willy Wonka. I was having the time of my life. After the parade, I knew that I was meeting back up with my grandparents and their friend who we knew for a while to see a house that my grandparents wanted to buy in Aspen. They wanted to move from Snowmass to Aspen. So we went to the house. I loved the house and it was three floors high. There was an elevator inside that I could use to go floor to floor. I was happy for that. When we were done looking on the first floor, my granddad, friend, and I rode the elevator to the second floor to look. I was loving the house so far. Then it was time to move to the top floor. Everything seemed to go smoothly, but this time, the friend and I were the only two people in the elevator. I didn't remember why my granddad didn't come in with us to ride up. Within the time of going up to the third floor, the friend's hand came up around my body and touched a body part of mine that I knew wasn't right. I immediately got my arm around my body and pushed his arm away and then when the door opened, I ran as fast as I could to my grandma and tried to tell her what happened while I was crying my heart out. I didn't even see what was around me because I just wanted to be safe with a family member. My family was trying to talk to me that night, but all I wanted to do was eat in my bed and watch movies. Why? Why? <laughs> of course. Of course. Um, unbeknownst to people, I have been in that house in the house 
that they um, defied Gabrielle's grandparents, sold it. I had the luxury of going over to their house for Danielle's birthday party and for um, for a little context here we have a dear friend a boss that shares the same birthday party same birthday as Danielle so his friends us um, me I know this because my stepmom was my stepmom dropped me off with my dad. And so I had the luxury of going over to this big, huge, beautiful house. And yeah. Yeah. And no wonder, yeah, they sold the house because of things were going on, which I won't Lay, but things were going on that they needed to sell the house. And yeah, I just, oh, that is, oh, that just makes me want to, yeah, makes me want to. <laughs> I it happened before they bought it. I know that, but still, it makes me want to. Yeah, it makes me want to strangle the person because yeah, it just yeah, it just makes me want to strangle the person. Strangle all individuals mm -hmm. who, including my abuser, um, who stood there and basically abused. She physically abused me, um, mentally abused all, all people that were standing in the room and no one did anything. And so again, no one no one, unless women and we speak it up, no one will do anything. No one will do anything. And <sighs> there's only so much statutory that can happen. I mean, there's only so much legally that can happen. I knew that my abuser was touching me in inappropriate ways and being a little bit of a sticking man towards everyone. And I almost called the cops. I was very, 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 very close to calling cops. But I decided to report it to a counselor and that counselor said, do you feel safe at home? And I said, yes, but this is what's going on. And okay. I think, I think my counselor knew that something was going on due to the way I was acting and due to the way that, yeah, the way that things were playing out. I know that my counselor knew that something was going on. And yeah. I'm forever... No. No. Go ahead. No, 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 you, me, you, no, 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 
Well, they basically told you to stuff it. They basically told you to stuff it. And that's what um, I... How do I put this without being really, really angry? And I'm going to be really, really angry because that's the only <laughs> way I can do it. And a lot of emotional and physical abusers tell the abusees to stuff it and and the family members tell the abusee to stuff it too. Um, I had my family tell me to stuff it after I came out with after I came out they said I remember and I remember exactly where I was and where I stand I was I had just moved um my family member came down here for one day. I'm not kidding you guys. One day. One day, one day, one day, one day, one day. And I had my assistant at the time, who were really good friends, we get along like a house on fire. My assistant was standing there. My assistant knew that my family member was coming because I told her. And um, my assistant said to me, do you want me to take, because I was in a total, totally different chair, a hard back chair that requires more transferring than this one I'm looking out at at the corner of my eye than a chair I'm in now. My daily driver now. So my assistant said to me, do you want me to teach um, your family member how to strap you in in a wheelchair and drive the van just so you have more access to driving the van? And um, I said, well, let me double check. My family member said, I don't drive in the U.S. And so I'm thinking, oh, great. This is going to be an interesting little adventure. You don't drive in the U.S. You know I'm in a wheelchair. You know I, you know I can walk short distances. And so I walk with my walker down the pathway um, to get to the parking lot, down to the parking lot, because at the time I didn't have a folding wheelchair. I didn't even know a folding wheelchair existed. Yes, I did, but I didn't, um, I wasn't brave enough to say, this is right, this is what I need. And so I didn't even know that a folding wheelchair existed. So at the time, I didn't have a folding wheelchair, now I do. But so at the time, I couldn't get into Ubers. I couldn't get into um, Lyfts. I couldn't get into anything without the assistance of my van or the assistance of my walker. And so my cousin and I go out to dinner go out to a sushi restaurant, she gets completely wasted. And I don't care if my family hears this, by the way. She gets completely wasted. And she kept, she keeps saying, we own the house. My family owned my dad's house which is completely not true. She goes on and on and on. And I said, is there, any I stuck up for myself. Is there anything that you want to say anything more under the influence of alcohol? 
and she goes, she started to cry about her dying. And this has been, well, it will be 12 years in August. Her aunt is my mom, to give you a frame of reference. And she said her mom wa wanted my mom's ashes, which is definitely not happening. And she started to cry and said, I want you to know that you're loved and all this stuff. And then we leave the restaurant and go um, go back, come back here, come back to Lunasville, my house. And we're sitting in the middle of the 101, which is the highway. It's the highway close to my house. We're sitting in the 101. I said, she says, I, the family thinks it's silly that you recorded another family member, my abuser. My abuser happened to be my godmother and my, um, godmother and my mom's sister and I said it's not silly it's not silly so that being said when people tell you and the abusers tell you to stuff it like they did Danielle and like they almost did me that I had a sense of what's going on I'm an old dumb and dumb and when the abusers tell you to stuff it, don't stuff it, people. Come out and tell whoever you need to tell, whether it's a um, first responder, whether it's a mandatory responder like counselors are and should be. Don't stuff it, especially if you are disabled and you need help. Do not stuff it. Do not stuff it. I had uh, a try to sexually assault me again down here. And see, I just basically said, get the hell off me. And she kind of stood there stunned in my bathroom when I said, get off me. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, just because she was trying to give me a hug and make it. And, ugh. You don't hug me naked. You don't, you, uh, there's stuff you don't do to me naked. There's stuff you don't do to the Neo naked. But when people tell you to stuff it, don't listen to them. Do not, do not, do not, do not listen to them. And hello, goodbye. You're not, we're no dumb dumb. We're no dumb dumb. And a lot of people think that the disabled are um, dumb and dumbs and can, yeah, we're not dumb and dumbs. So when people tell you, especially when you have a disability and tell you to stuff these things, don't stuff them, people, mm -hmm. because it makes them worse. It, um, it makes it worse. The only reason why Danielle just told you that story is because I came out, I told people, and I told people, and I told it publicly too. And you guys know I sat at my kitchen counter and had Danielle on the phone with me and had and told you what went on. And so Danielle listened to it, and I did not force Danielle to tell me that story. She came out on her own after hearing me name on about it. <laughs> and so I'm really, really, really proud of Danielle for coming out and telling it publicly. I'm really proud of Danielle for telling it publicly. And I'm really proud of those of you who've come out and told it publicly 
since my story, but do not stuff it. Do not hide it. Do not, yeah, do not um, run to the closest family member, which Daniel did. They, they just, people will be shocked. But when you get uh, emotionally and physically abused or a person tries to emotionally and physically abuse you, friends, and it's not always the AIDS that do the emotional and physical abuse. It could be close friends or a, a family member. And do not stuff it, you guys. That is my call to action. If you're in a bad space or know a family member that's in a bad space, it happens to women all the time. Go run. Run to the closest counselor, the closest family friend. As I said before, come up with a cold word that your friends, your close friends know about and run. And run to, um, I'm going to mention priest. I'm going to mention priest. I'm going to mention a church. If you have a first name relationship with the person who runs your church, they are mandatory reporters too. I did, I don't know if you guys know that, but um, Kodri is mandatory reporters. So run to them, run to, because nine times out of 10, a family member is going to tell you to stuff it. And we don't want to stuff the stuff. We, no, no, it just makes it horrible for the sexual assault victim or it makes it horrible for um, the people that almost get sexually assaulted or emotionally abused. So don't stuff it. Run to a first responder again or even tell 911 and then they'll figure it out. Again, a first responder or a mandatory reporter. And I am, you guys don't know this, but I am a mandatory reporter and I should take that mandatory reporting class down here again. I need to do that because I am a mandatory reporter because of my teaching background. And so I knew what to spot. I knew what to spot in my emotional and physical abuse case. But yeah, run to churches, run to close family friends, run to counselors, run to, if you get hit, run to EMTs and tell them that you have been emotionally and physically abused and run away from your abuser as quickly as possible. And yes, my abuser still lives in the Bahamas. And no, she did not move there after my emotional and physical abuse. No, she lives there all her life. And my mom lives in the same house with her. And yeah, so, and my mom, don't ask how, but my mom knows she emotionally abused me. And yeah, because telepathically, my mom figured that out. And so, um, yeah. And even though my mommy is gone, I still have a strong, strong, strong relationship with my biological mom. And yeah. So run, you guys, run to the first responders that are mandatory reporters that you can. And I believe lawyers are mandatory reporters. I have to double check on that. 
I know that social workers are uh, mandatory reporters. I will double check on lawyers and I will double check on social workers um, because I have two friends that happen to be social workers so I can ask them. Um, one's retired, the other one's still active. And one's down here and the other one's in Colorado. But I believe that social workers are mandatory reporters. I believe in their training that they get mandatory reporting training. And so I need to take that mandatory reporting class down here again. So, um, and when the next time I go to one of the programs I work with down here, I'm actually going to ask them if they have a mandatory reporting class that I can take because I need to do it um, down here just just in case that um, people are acting wonky towards the disabled down here because I live I live in a community full of disabled and you never know what will happen. So mandatory reporters, I need to check on that. I need to check on the class. Good job, Danny, for reminding me because I know I'm a mandatory reporter in the state of Colorado, but um, Arizona, I yeah, I need to check. And so, um, and you can even tell the agencies there um, if you guys work with, if you're child or you work with the agencies, I believe the agencies are mandatory reporters as well. They, um, when the aide almost, almost sexually assaulted me, the agency took swift action, but I believe these agencies are mandatory reporters as well. I'll double check on that and get back to you. I um, So here's my to-do list. I'm saying that out loud. I'll check on Arizona mandatory reporting classes for those of you on um, Arizona listening to this. I will also check if lawyers are mandatory reporters. I will also check if um, social workers are mandatory reporters and heads of agencies for AIDS are mandatory reporters. I believe they are. I'm 99% positive, but I will double check on that and you guys remind me and hold me to it. Danielle, you remind me and hold me to it because we need to quit stuffing this as women. And yeah, so, and next week, it's going to be another heavy episode because I just got clarification on something that I knew about. Yeah, something that I knew about over the weekend, but something that uh, happened um, in 2019 and through my mental health work that I've been doing consciously for a year now. Um, I see a counselor. I'm also in a semi, well, independent recovery program. And um, through the clarification, I'm that I have come to figure out that something happened in my life and luckily I got away from it again. And so, yeah. So I'm going to talk about that and then we'll get to the fun episodes. And then next week is, so next week is a heavy episode. And then we're going to get back to the fun episodes where you can listen as a family and also listen to this one as a 
family, you may not want to listen to it. As you take it to school, but let's start um, having the open conversations of don't touch my body, don't, yeah. Let's start having the open conversation to people because um, that's the way we roll. And Danielle, do you want to leave us out? Thank you for following us. And again, I'm really, really proud of you, Danielle, for coming out and sharing your story like you always do. But um, this one was a little bit tough. And let's squish the stigma of emotionally and physically abused victims, you guys, and then we'll work on it. Bye, you guys. Bye.